Bulls were caught still in there between second and third base. Miles Johnson thrown out with runners on first and second base two down. Mules have stranded six runners the last three innings of the ball game. Mules have stranded. They were loaded back in the second. They stranded two in the third and one there in the fourth. So we are back here to uh, Beck McCaden. And McCaden so far today is 0 for 1 here in the ball game. This one throws back to the screen. It's taken for a ball. One ball, no strikes. All right, now we're back on YouTube. There we go. We had some difficulties for some reason, but we're back on YouTube now. We apologize. We sh we're on Facebook as well. Swing and a miss. Way to come back. One ball and one strike. Time was called by the home plate umpire. Miss Amy Robertson tuning in. Boy, I tell you what, how is your boy doing at Three Rivers College? I saw some pictures on Facebook the other day about him. Oh, Brady Robertson, he was our leadoff man last year. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. He was a lot of fun to watch too last year. So now season good is ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes. This one pops straight up along the infield. Noah Spain underneath it and makes the catch. One up and one down here in the top of inning number five. That one is going to end up and it's going to go F5 on the out. One down in the inning and we are back to the top of the lineup now with Anderson. Anderson is 0 for 1 today. Here's the pitch on the way by Season Good and this one is ripped in to left field for a base hit. A one out base hit by the leadoff man. One up and one down, or I should say one on and one down here as Anderson gets his first hit of the ball game. He is walked and singled here in the ball game. So a runner on first base now with one down and Brock Morey coming up. He has struck out twice. He is 0 for 2 so far today. Still 2 nothing, And once again, Anderson Acts like he's going to take off on first base. He did back in the first inning and was successful at it. Mules now still down by a couple of runs. Tomorrow afternoon, we will be in Sykeston. This one popped up, and this one's going to get out of play behind us. One ball and one strike. So tomorrow afternoon, the game like today is going to begin at 4.30. That means our pregame is going to begin shortly after 4.10 tomorrow. We'll just be on the radio tomorrow just because of the fact that in Sykeston there is no power. Two balls and one strike now. As Brock Morey, the left fielder, he has struck out twice so far in the game. Anderson now leading away from first base. Pretty good lead. This one just misses outside. Three balls and one strike now. So three balls and one strike. And now, or I should say, Dobbs rather going to walk out and talk to his pitcher. Go ahead and get him to kind of settle back down just a little bit. So now Dobbs went out and talked to season good, and we'll see what happens here on this 3-1 pitch. Anderson leads away from first base. He'll stay put, and the runners will advance on the base on ball. So two on, one down here in the inning as Morey gets a one-out walk. First walk issued by season good. Farmer was hit by a pitch and scored it back in the first. And he struck out in the third.
Strike is called. A way to come back on that pitch by Season Good. No balls in a strike. Our broadcast today is presented by First Midwest Bank, also Kevin's Auto Repair, PB Realty Legacy Farm and Land Specialist, Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, and by Russians Towing. There's a rip down the third base line and foul. Boy, he got a hold of that one. In the hole now, no balls and two strikes. Ellington leads at 2 0 here in the top of inning number five. Mules have some movement, it looks like, in the bullpen right now. And it's David Durbin staying loose down there. This one fouled away to the screen. Still no balls and two strikes. There will be a JV game following the varsity game here today. Mule still down by two runs. Ellington got all both of their runs in that first inning as nobody has scored since. Here is the 0-2 pitch on the way by Season Good. Just misses outside. One ball, two strikes now. Season Good about to throw pitch number 28 here in the ball game. Season Good threw four or 13 pitches rather in the fourth inning. And he is already at 14 in this inning. Just misses up high. You can hear the uh, fans. They'll tell you what they believe on that last pitch. I don't got to say anything. Two balls and two strikes. One away here in the inning. Two runners on. Here's your 2-2 pitch by season good. There's a fly ball out to left field. It Dawes has to go for it, and this one is gone. A three-run jack. And Farmer got all of that one. Five nothing is the score now. And Farmer, as he goes deep, and it is the first home run this season allowed by a Popper Bluff pitcher. The fans here are not happy. They thought that it was strike three a couple of pitches ago. And just like that, strike one right down the middle there. No balls and a strike. It is now 5 nothing Ellington on a three-run bomb. It went every bit of 345 on that last, on that last hit by Farmer. Farmer gets his second home run of the season. This one is down the left field line, and it's fair, and Dawes will pick it up in the corner, and it'll be a long base hit. Runner now on first base, so uh, two hits in a row now. Runner on first base, still one down in the inning. <laughs> So here in the ball game, Ellington, three runs on, or make that five runs on five hits. They've got no errors here in the game. Mules have no runs on four hits and one error. This one misses outside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Ellington now is up by five runs. Top of the lineup is due up in the fifth inning for the Mules. Swing and a miss to Kobe Hedrick. One ball, one strike. Count is even now. One ball, one strike here as season good comes set. A runner on first outside for a ball. Two balls and a strike. So two balls and one strike. Season good, looks back at Henry. Pitcher is on deck. Misses up high, three balls and a strike. 
season good. It gave up a three run homer to Jake Farmer, his second home run this season. That could wind up and be a big difference maker in this game. So season good now, checks on the runner back at first. Here's a 3-1 pitch. This one is a chopper to the pitcher. Nope, it's gonna be taken by Johnson. Safe at first base. And this one is gonna end up being an infield base hit to Johnson. Runners on first and second base now. And that is three straight hits. Anderson led off or I'm sorry, McKayden led off with a pop-up fly to third base. Then a base hit by Anderson, a walk to Morey, three-run homer by Farmer, and back-to-back -back hits by Henry and by Hedrick. And now the pitcher comes up, this one taken outside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Two on, one down in the inning. Mules are down by five runs. One ball, no strike here. Season good. Takes a look at the runner. This one is popped up toward right field. Greenwall coming in for it. And nearly, <laughs> as him and Spain near or make that hall nearly hit each other, but good sportsmanship there. And Greenwall will make the catch. And there are two down in the inning. Good job by Greenwall. So two outs, runners on first and second base. That one goes F9 on the out. And now Brett Gore coming up to the plate. Wind blowing out toward left field, straight out to left field. This one pitched inside. One ball and no strikes to Brett Gore. Gore is one for two in the ball game. Gore so far struck out and doubled in the fourth. So Ellington adds a three runs this inning on a three run homer by Jake Farmer. Just misses, boy it looked good from here. I thought Dobb did a great job of framing that pitch. One ball, one strike. Two on, two down here in the fifth. This one outside, three balls and no strikes now. For the Mules coming up in the bottom part of this inning, it'll be the leadoff man, Dylan Hall, Colby Greenwald, then Kaysen King. And lost him on four straight pitches, and the bases are loaded now. So now the eighth man to bat in the inning, and here is Raylan Morrissey, or Raylan Morrissey, rather. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game. Lined out to third base and popped out to Greenwall his last time up. Now the bases are loaded with two down in the inning. Pitch number 31 coming up here, and this one's taken up high for a ball. Let's recap the inning here. To begin the inning was McCaden who popped out to third base. And then a single by Anderson, a walk by Morey, a three run bomb by Farmer. Back to back hits by Henry and by Hedrick. A pop out by McCormick to right field. And then a walk to Gore. And that's where we are right now. The count is one ball, one strike. Bases are loaded. Henry on third base, Hedrick on second, Gore is on first. It's 1-1 one, one the count now. Swing and a miss, and season good is one pitch away from getting out of the inning. Five runs on six hits by Ellington. No errors so far in the game. Here is the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss, big, big punch out. As the Mules are now out of the inning, but not before the Whippets score three runs on four hits. They leave them loaded. We go to the bottom of inning number five. It's all Ellington, five nothing on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Patriot Auto Glass offers chip repair or glass replacement. They provide fast quality service done by experienced technicians. Ask about our veteran and first responder discounts. Call Patriot Auto Glass today at 573-840-5027. And remember, Patriot Auto Glass will come to you.
So we are back here in the bottom of inning number five. It's Dylan Hall, Greenwall, and Kobe King all do, or make that Kaysen King rather, all do up here in the bottom of inning number five. If anybody gets on for the Mules, it'll go to Noah Spain, who will bat fourth in the inning. Hall, first pitch is taken for a strike. No balls in one strike. So the difference right now in this game is Farmer. He got a three-run homer. Jacob Farmer in the top of the inning. This one, Hall is able to hold off. The count is even at one ball, one strike. We do owe you a legal ID. We'll take it after this at bat as we are getting close now to 6 p.m. This one fouled away to the screen. A one ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes here. So now McCormick comes set, and here's the one-two pitch. Downstairs for a ball. Count is even at two balls and two strikes. One minute now until the top of the hour. Ooh, that one got him right in the back. So the Mules have their leadoff man on. Let's go ahead now and pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. So the first pitch coming is taken for a ball, one ball and no strikes. I'm Frankie Castile. You're listening to Mules Baseball on today's talk, 93.3 FM, 9.30 AM, KWOC, and streaming online at KWOC.com. Also video streaming courtesy of Facebook and on YouTube. I'm Frankie Castile alongside Tim Hicks. We are back with you again for exciting baseball action here in Popper Bluff. Three balls and no strikes now. And the Mules need every runner right now. Mules left them loaded back in the second, left two on in the third, one in the fourth. Strike is called, three balls and one strike now. Don't believe the uh, crowd liked that call. I could hear the fan section there. They were not happy with that call. Here is the 3-1 pitch inside. Runners on first and second base now. So a hit by pitch and now a walk. I got to tell you, I would never give up on this team, but I got to tell you, if the Mules are going to make any kind of comeback in this game, it all begins right here in this inning. Mules have got to get some runs in this inning. Inside for a ball, one ball, no strikes. Time is called by the home plate umpire. Must be a ball in the field, in the outfield. I can hear him telling the coach to someone will get the ball. So one ball, no strikes here to Kaysen King. King so far today was hit by a pitch back in the third, and he popped out the short in the first. Kaysen King does great work with runners in scoring position, batting 400. There's a chopper to third base, and they're going to tag him at third. And King is going to reach on a fielder's choice. So one down in the inning. So King will wind up on first base. It's going to go five unassisted. So one down in the inning. And Hall was tagged out at third base. So Mule still have runners on first and second now. And now Noah Spain, he has singled and popped out to center. He is one for two in the ball game. He comes up with two runners on. Inside for a ball, a little bit high as well. One ball, no strikes. So Dylan Hall, or make that Noah Spain rather coming up. He is batting 333 with runners in scoring position. There's a ground chopper hit hard to Anderson. Anderson goes to second base, not in time. One run comes in. It's going to be a throwing air. And King will wind up on third base. So the Mules now end up with their first run of the ball game. So 
of the Mules. They wind up and score the first run of the ball game. And that's going to bring the head coach now, Coach Heim, out to the, the, the mound. And we'll see what he wants to do here as the Mules are on the board for the first time in this game. And it looks like McCormick is going to stay in the ball game. He's only thrown so far 75 pitches. And the Mules will end up So they're going to stay with McCormick. So it's going to be a fielder's choice. And the runner takes off, and Noah Spain is going to end up on second base now. Strike is called. And Spain with a stolen base. And now it's one ball and one strike. One down here in the inning. So the Mules are on the board now as Bryce Dobbs coming up to the plate. Dobbs, it's one ball and two strikes here. Dobbs so far has struck out and popped out to second base. Would love to be able to get some RBIs here. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes. Big punch out. Two outs in the inning. And now Marcus Tabanera. Dylan Bratcher awaits on deck. Tabanera, he is due for a hit. He is walked and lined out to third base. Would love to get those two runners in right now on second and third. This one he popped up, he jammed him inside. One, make that no balls and a strike, two runners on. Second air of the ball game. Or make that the first air of the ball game by Ellington costed him a run. Just misses off the plate. One ball and one strike. If the Mules are able, fortunate to get maybe another run across, maybe the run at second base, Mules right back in this game. Two balls and a strike. Bratcher awaiting on deck. We are in the bottom of inning number five right now. Mules down by four runs. Mules getting their first run in this inning. There, this one's popped up out of play behind us. And now the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Pitch number 23 upcoming. This will be the most pitches thrown in an inning by McCormick this ball game. McCormick, 12 pitches in the first, 22 in the second, 14 in the third, 13 in the fourth. And now he has thrown officially 23 in this inning, the most of the ball game. It's a full count now, three balls and two strikes. Bratcher awaiting on deck. Tabanera would love to get on base. He would love a two-out hit here. Here's the payoff pitch. There's a, there's a big hit. One run's going to come in. Two runs is going to come in. Tabanera is going to wind up on second base. What a big a two out, two RBI double by Tabanera. He clears the bases. And the Mules pick up two of big runs there on the double. That is a big hit by Marcus Tabanera, and now it is it is now five to three the score. Boy, the Mules needed those RBIs right there. No doubt about it. Oh, 
There's a pop. This is a chopper to first base, and the out will be taken there on first base. But the Mules end up, and they get three runs that come across to score. Three runs on one hit, one air in the inning. The Mules a strand a runner on second base. We are going to the six now. The Mules trail five to three on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Scott Law Firm is experienced in estate planning and the preparation of documents like wills and trusts. Let the Scott Law Firm help you protect your family and pass along your estate according to your terms. Call Scott Law Firm today at 785-4688. Southeast Signs and Graphics of Poplar Bluff can handle all of your printing needs from t-shirts, wall displays, banners, and so much more. Call their team at 573-772-5566 or get to southeastsignsandgraphics.com. So we've got some defensive substitutions and positions here to tell you about. And it looks like here that Miles Johnson is now going to end up and he is going to go to second bait or make that he'll be back at catching for the Mules. Also looking in the outfield right now, Kobe Greenwald is going to stay out there in right field. Dylan Hall in center field. And Aiden Dawes will remain in the outfield right where they were in the infield. Kaysen King is going to wind up on third base now. Dylan Bratcher, he is going to end up on first base now. So the DH. Looks like it is going to be eliminated here as Bratcher was the DH. And now he's going to play the field. Noah Spain is going to end up at shortstop. And Johnson, he will go to the catching position. So the first pitch is to Kaysen King at third base. A long throw to first. Got him in time. One pitch and one out. As Beck will ground out 5-3 on the out. One pitch and one down here in at the top of inning number six. Aiden Anderson. So Anderson now coming up. We are back to the top of the lineup now. One down in at the sixth inning. One away here in at the top of inning number six now. First pitch is inside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Season good back out for his third inning. He has pitched two and one third inning so far. One ball, no strikes. Mules down by two. There's a pop fly. This one is between center and left. Hall and Dahl's going for it. It'll be in the middle there. And it'll be a one out double. Good hit by Anderson as he ends up on second base with one down. That is his second hit of the ball game. It's a one out double. Now we're gonna get a Kurt, nope. Now batting number three, Brock Morey. So now Brock Morey coming up. He has walked and scored, struck out twice. Season good, pitch number 51 coming up. Here's the pitch on the way inside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Mules now trail five to three, trying to keep it a two run game now. This one's popped straight up in the air. Spain gets underneath it, calls everybody off and makes the catch. Two down in the inning. Spain makes it look easy out there, no matter if he's playing third base or shortstop. That one goes F6 on the out, two down. Now batting number 29, Jake Farmer. So now Farmer coming up to the plate. 
He hit a doozy last inning, a three-run bomb, his second of the season. Season good knows it. Time was called. Season good didn't realize it. Pitch don't count. Going to be a no pitch there. Season good was looking back at second base when the home plate umpire called time. And now we're going to get a trip to the mound here, or I should say the home plate umpire. Trying to listen to see what they're talking about here. Can't really hear. So Patillo coming out talking to the home plate umpire. In the meantime, our broadcast here today presented by Air Solutions, also First Choice Insurance, Popper Bluff Regional Medical Center, Patriot Auto Glass, also being brought to you by Christian Automotive and Tire, Eye Care Specialist, Larry Hillis Dodge, Briggs and Stratton, Scott Law Group LLC, and Taco Johns. So now the two umpires get together. I'm not sure what the issue was there. Coach Patillo came out and was talking with the home plate umpire. And then the home plate umpire went ahead and made a motion to the field umpire. And now they are talking between a home plate and third base right there on the line. It's something to do with pitches. All right, so Patillo goes back to the dugout, and I guess they're going to go ahead and walk him here. So they're going to intentionally walk Jake Farmer. Now batting number 13. Jacob so Jacob Henry now going to come up to the plate. So they're going to intentionally walk Jacob Farmer after he hit a three-run homer last inning. I can't say that I blame him. Might be the right call when it's all said and done. Henry got a base hit his last time. Runners take off on the pitch. And there's a ground ball going to get into the outfield for a hit. And one run comes in. So Ellington, they get a run back as Anderson comes in to score. It is now 6-3 to three Ellington. And runners on first and second base now. That might turn out to be a big RBI there. So now Kobe Hedrick is coming up to the plate now as Johnson walks out to talk to his pitcher. It is now 6-3 to three Ellington. And now Hedrick, the DH spot coming up. He has struck out twice and a base hit back in the fifth. So now season good comes set. There's a ground ball hit sharply over to third base, the backhand, and there's no play. And that'll be an infield base hit. Kaysen King had nowhere to go on the pitch, and Hedrick is going to end up with his second base hit in the ball game. And now McCormick is coming up to the plate. Owen McCormick. Bases are loaded now, 6-3 to three Ellington. Ellington got two in the first, three in the fifth, and one in the sixth. This right here is a big at bat for McCormick. Swing and a miss, and he is in the hole now. No balls in a strike. So McCormick was hit by a pitch back in the first and the fourth inning. He was also picked off in the fourth, and he popped out to right field in the fifth. Bases are loaded inside for a strike, and McCormick did not agree with that pitch. No balls and two strikes. Big pitch coming by season good. Number 10 in the inning coming up. Bases are loaded now. Mules got three last inning. Ellington got one back. Up high for a ball. One ball, two strikes now. Not a bad pitch by season good. Ahead, no balls and two strikes. Now it's one-two count. Brett Gore waiting on deck, who has doubled and walked. Big pitch coming by season good. There's a rip to the outfield left field. A one run comes in. And they're going to hold up the runner on third base. 
So two runs come in on another base hit. And now it is seven to three. Seven to three now. Another RBI base hit. It is now seven to three. Back to a four-run lead again here by the Whippets. And now Coach Patillo coming out to talk with Season Good. Mules cut it down to two runs here. It was five to three before this inning, and now it's back up to seven. Season Good day is going to come to an end. Kaysen King now is going to come to the pitcher spot. And we're going to get some substitutions now coming in. So Kaysen King is going to be the man that is going to be the new pitcher. We'll step away for a one-minute timeout. We'll come right back. It is 7-3. The Whippets lead by four on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers is a third-generation family-owned jewelry and repair store who have served the Poplar Bluff community for over 60 years. Our family has always worked hard to provide the finest jewelry creations and service imaginable. Let's recap in the game. David Durbin began this game going three innings for the Mules. He faced here altogether. He faced 13 batters. David Durbin did. He went one hit, two runs. Both were earned runs. He walked one, struck out seven. Meanwhile, Season Good went two and two-third innings. He faced 20 batters here this afternoon. He gave up nine hits, five runs. All five were earned. He walked three, struck out two, and hit a batter. So his day comes to an end, and now looking at the new pitcher for the Mules, it'll be Kaysen King. He will now be the new pitcher. Kobe Greenwall is going to wind up at third base, and for season good, he will now end up as the right fielder. So now we'll see what the Mules first pitch is in there for a called strike here by season or make that by Case and King rather. We'll get you the numbers on at Case and King as King is making his making another appearance, his fourth appearance in this season. One ball in one strike. I can still see the end of his back. I can still see the end of his back. Coach uh, Patil thought that should have been a strike. So Kaysen King has pitched two or six and two third innings. He has given up 11 hits, seven runs, six earned, walked two, struck out two. He's also hit a couple of batters as well this season. Those are the numbers right now for Kaysen King. Two balls and one strike. Season good, moves over to right field. By the way, the DH position, it is done now. Bryce Dobbs' day comes to an end. Season good is now going to sit in in that spot, in the five spot. It is two balls and two strikes here. Kaysen King trying to keep the Mules in this game. Seven to three now the score. 
and a swing and a miss, and the inning will come to an end. Well, they leave them loaded. They pick up two runs on four hits. We go to the bottom of inning number six. It'll be Johnson, Dawes, and then Hall, 8-9-1 when we come back. You're listening and watching Mules Baseball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. So we are back here in the ball game, and we've got ourselves a new pitcher on the mound for the Ellington Whippets, and it'll be Brock Morey who is going to come in now, making his sixth appearance so far this season. He is one and two on the year. He has pitched eight and two third innings, giving up 13 hits, eight runs, five earned. He has walked one, struck out nine. And he's thrown one wild pitch so far here in this season as we go to the bottom of inning number six. And the first pitch is taken downstairs for a ball as Brock Morey now is the new pitcher for the Whippets. McCormick goes five innings. He faced 25 batters, five hits, three runs, and none of them were earned. He walked two batters and struck out five, also hit three batters. Count is even at one ball, one strike now to Johnson. He is one for two in the ball game. Strike two is called. Johnson struck out and he singled and he also stole a base. He was caught stealing back in the fourth. There's a ground ball hit sharply to third base. Henry over to first base and the extension in time. Goes 5-3 on the out. Good extension there by Gore. One up and one down here in the inning. It goes 5-3 on the out there. And there is one down here in the top or make that bottom of inning number six. So now the Mules down to five outs remaining here in the game. There's a strike called right down the middle. No balls and one strike. So now Beck will move over. He's going to play right or make that left field rather. So Beck is going to play right field. And McCormick, he'll move out and he'll play center field. So the DH is still intact. It's one ball and two strikes here. Nobody on for the Mules here in the bottom of inning number six. Up high, count is even at two balls and two strikes. So back and left, McCormick, and a strike three is called. Two down in the inning. That is the second punch out by Johnson of the game. 
Aiden Dawes strikes out for the first time in the game, rather. I was looking at uh, Johnson there. And now we are back to the top of the lineup. And Hall takes strike one. And no balls in a strike here. We are in the bottom of inning number six. Mules are down by four runs. There's a rip to third base, and this one is going to end up in the outfield. Good try, though, by Henry. That was a rocket shot by Dylan Hall, and he'll wind up on first base. That is the first hit of the ball game for Dylan Hall. So Greenwall coming up to the plate now. Overcast skies here, a little bit of blue sky, not much. Hall now coming up to the plate. He has singled and walked and struck out. Boy, the Mules need base runners right now. We owe you a legal ID coming up toward the bottom of the hour. Morey comes set. There's a ground ball hit sharply the opposite way. It's a base hit. And the Mules have two on and two down. That one's hit to right field. And now Kaysen King coming up to the plate. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. So now King steps in and he takes strike one right down the middle. It is 629. I'm Frankie Castile. You're listening and watching live at Mules Baseball on today's talk, 93.3 FM, 9.30 AM, KWOC. That one's taken outside for a ball, one ball, one strike. I'm Frankie Castile alongside Tim Hicks on the camera. Seven to three now the score. Mules have runners on first and second base. Boy, King, I was watching him take some uh, BP earlier. He was knocking the ball all the way out to the left field line. Get out, baby. Get out for a base hit. And now the Mules are going to try. No, they're going to have uh, bases loaded. Woo, Dylan Hall thought about going home on that one. And King ripped one in the left field. And now the bases are loaded. And coming up to the plate now is Noah Spain. Boy, Spain would love to get a hold of one here. Mules at three consecutive hits. And Noah Spain, he is due for a hit. He is one for three. And we're going to get a pinch runner coming in, or make that a courtesy runner, rather. It'll be Malik Thompson coming in as a courtesy runner. Malik Thompson is coming in now on first base. So Dylan Hall is on third. Kobe Greenwall on second. Malik Thompson is on first. Noah Spain taking strike one right down the middle. Boy, the Mules here, if they can figure out a way to maybe get, I don't know, let's say a double here. If the Mules can pick, there's one. Get out for a hit. Get out for a hit. It's going to get the center field. A one run comes in to score. Two runs will come in, safe at third base. Mules pick up two more runs. Oh, that's a big knock by Noah Spain, a big knock. So the Mules now with two more runs on the board. And for Poplar Bluff, they've got a 7-5 to five lead now, Ellington does. And now we're going to see Ryland season good. Now the home plate umpire is going to come out and talk to the field umpire. I'm not sure what this is about. I'm not sure what the issue was. I was watching Noah Spain's hit to center field. But obviously, Coach Heim is not happy about something. Nevertheless, the Mules have runners on second and third base following that huge hit by Noah Spain. So two RBIs, and now it's a seven to five game. Now batting, number three, Ryan Season Good. Boy, Season Good here. He is in a huge spot. He is looking for his first hit of the season. Throw back to third base is not in time. Hey, 
They thought he came off. Coach Heim is not happy. He thought the runner got picked off, but they're saying he's safe on third. I didn't think he was picked off. But Thompson's got to be very careful. Coach Heim is very upset. He thought he had a pick off on third base and did not get the call that he wanted. But to be honest with you, Thompson's got to be careful on third base. So now, Morey steps off the bag. Boy, Noah Spain it came through in a big way with a two-out, two-run double. There's a goal. Oh, this one just goes foul. Woo! That could have tied the game. That was a foul ball by Season Good. That one had a double written all over it. No balls in a strike. No balls and one strike here. Mules have them on second and third. Here's the pitch by Morey. Ground ball hits sharply to, to shortstop. Anderson, they're going to try to chase him down, and he's got him as he was sliding in. It was the right call, but the Mules come up with two big runs to end the sixth inning. Mules now are back within play. Coming up, it'll be Tabanera, Bratcher, and Johnson all due up in the bottom part of the inning. Mules now trail 7-5 to five on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Caring for those you love also means taking good care of yourself. At Poplar Bluff Regional Medical Center, our health care providers take the time to identify your health risks and help you prioritize good health. Regular checkups and age-appropriate screenings are important to be healthy now and stay well in the future. With same or next-day appointments and online scheduling, we make it easy to make an appointment right now. You can even see us from the comfort of your own home via telehealth. Put your health first today by making an appointment by visiting pbrmc.com and searching online scheduling. So we are going now to the top of inning number seven in the Mules right now. They trail by a score of seven to five. Oh, I see what the problem is. The scoreboard out there says uh, seven to six. It's actually seven to five. That's the problem. I get it now. I didn't know what the home plate umpire was talking about. Now I get him. I understand. Seven to five is a score right now. Ellington leads it here by two runs as we are going to the top of inning number seven. Morrissey is going to lead off. And boy, the Mules right here, right now, they've got to figure out a way to give up no runs here in this inning. Mules would love to be able to uh, give up no runs. Mules picking up two runs there in the bottom of inning number Six. This one pops straight up behind us. It's foul ball now. No balls and two strikes. So Mules got three runs in the fifth, two in the sixth. This one is inside for a ball. One ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes here. And, oh, thought it was a punch out there. It's two balls and two strikes. Two balls and two strikes. One down here in the inning. 
So one away here in the inning and got some clarification. They're saying that that run counted at the end of last inning on the fielder's choice because Spain was able to, even though he got called out, he was able to advert the out long enough for the run at third base to come in and score. That being said, it is now a seven to six ball game now. So seven to six is the score. And now it's a two balls and a one strike here. Three balls and a strike rather. They've got a pinch hitter in now. For Beck, swing and a miss. So Brewer is up there, three balls and two strikes. There we go, now we are set. One down here in the inning and swing and a miss and two down in the inning now. I had to get clarification on that because I didn't under they I thought the uh, the run did not count but it did it did count so they gave it to him and now it is a seven to six ball game the mules are down by one run shades of what happened on Saturday that's what the umpire was saying. I thought he said the run did not count but he came back and said that it did count. No balls and one strike here. Yes, Colin, the run did score, but the umpire, I thought he said it didn't count. I had to get clarification. He did say it didn't count, to be fair, but we got clarification, and now the umpire, he called time and not sure what the issue was there. Coach Patillo kind of smiling there in the dugout. No balls and a strike. All right, seven to six now, the score. Mori waiting on deck. This one up high for a ball. One ball and one strike now. Anderson, the leadoff man. He is two for three today. He has walked and scored, grounded out. He's singled and doubled. He has scored at three runs total here today. Two balls and a strike. I'm okay with getting it wrong as long as I get it right in the end. That's all that matters. Score is correct, seven to six now. The Mules pick up a run on that last inning. That was a big run too. Noah Spain was able to invert the out long enough for the run. Oh, three balls in a strike. Just a little bit outside. And I can hear the Mules fans. They'll, they'll let you know about it. We've got some passionate folks here today. That's for sure. Our Mules fans, very passionate. They'll tell you. And lost him on the pitch. Two out walk to Anderson. So a two out walk to Anderson. And now Brock Morey, he is the pitcher right now. He's 0 for 3 coming up. He has struck out twice, popped out, and he's walked. He has scored a run as well. Anderson going to take off. They've got him in a rundown. They're going to throw. It's not going to be in time. Not going to be in time as Anderson winds up, and he steals a second. Good run there by Anderson. He is such a dynamic player. That's a big run standing on second base. That is a big run out there on second. Two down in the inning. Moy now. That's an insurance run standing on second base. Anderson. 
Pops it straight up in the air. Johnson going to call for it, and he makes the catch. Big out there, and now the Mules have a chance to come up and, if nothing else, can tie the game. No runs, no hits, one left on. Tabanera, Bratcher, Johnson all coming up when we come back. You're watching and listening to Mules Baseball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Want a career and not just another job? It's waiting for you at Briggs & Stratton. Great pay, great benefits, and continuing education. Everything you and your family deserve. Go to careers.basco.com and look at Poplar Bluff job openings. Breathe easier and extend the life of your HVAC system plus fewer repair bills with Air Solutions' comprehensive maintenance plan. You'll save money and get the peace of mind that only comes from calling Air Solutions. 785-1500. All right, so here we go now in the bottom of inning number seven for the Mules, and we're going to have Tabanera, Bratcher, and Johnson all coming up here in the bottom of inning number seven. So the question is, can the Mules figure out a way to come back and get a win? That is the question. Mules did it on Saturday against Van Buren. Can they do it here today against Ellington? They've got to come back from one run down. At one point, they were down by five runs at one point in this game. Right now, they are down just by a run. So now we'll see what the Mules are able to do here as we see Tabanera coming up to the plate now. Tabanera. See if he is able to get things started, and he'll take strike one. As we are underway here in the bottom of inning number seven, last opportunity for the Mules. One ball and one strike now to Tabanera. So one ball, one strike. Held up, good take there by Tabanera. He's ahead in the count now. Two balls and one strike. Boy, Tabanera would love to, if he's able to get on base here, that's going to put a lot of pressure on Morey. There's a ground ball hit sharply to Henry. Third base, he touches it. Oh, he touched it in foul territory. Yes, he did. It just goes foul. That was a smart play by Henry to let that ball go foul before he touched it. If he wouldn't have, then Tabanera would have been on base. Two balls and two strikes. Smart play by Henry, no doubt. If he would have touched that in fair territory, then that would have been an infield base hit. He would not have been able to throw Tabanera out. Two balls and two strikes. There's the ground ball. This one hit to Anderson at shortstop. Anderson, long throw, got him at first base. One up and one down here in the inning. So now Dylan Bratcher coming up to the plate now. So Bratcher will come up with nobody on and one away here in the inning. Bratcher, he is one for three on the afternoon to this point. Bratcher so far, he's got one base hit. He would love to have a second one right here. Strike one is called right down the middle. So a strike called to Bratcher. This one is inside, nearly clipped him. He just stood there and was able to not get hit somehow. One ball and one strike now. One ball, one strike here to Dylan Bratcher. Looks like the Ellington softball team. Some of them have made the trip over here to watch their team play, their, their boys play baseball. Inside for a ball, two balls and one strike. So two balls and a strike here. 
This one just misses. Three balls and a strike now. So three balls and one strike. Coach Heim not happy with the call there. He said that should have been a strike. There's a fly ball. This one out to right field. Conway gets underneath it, and he makes the catch. Two down here in the inning. So now the Mules are down to their final out. So now Miles Johnson coming up to the plate now. Two down in the inning, and the Mules are down to their final out of this ball game. Here is the pitch on the way in there for a called strike. One, one out away from Ellington beating Popper Bluff. In there for another strike. It's quickly no balls and two strikes now. No balls and two strikes. Here is the 0-2 pitch to Johnson. One ball and two strikes now. Good take there by the Mules. Very good take. So now the Mules trying to figure out a way to keep this game alive. They're down seven to six. Here in the bottom of inning number seven. Two hours and 14 minutes. And there's a ground ball hit sharply down the third baseline, and we'll do it again. Still no balls and two strikes. No balls and two strikes here for the Mules. As Johnson tries to keep this game alive, he is one for three. Single, a strikeout, and a ground out. There's a ground out to Henry. Henry over to first base, and not in time. It goes over the bag, and Johnson will stay on first. I'm not sure how they're going to score that one. That was going to be a bank bank play. We'll see how they score it. They're going to go ahead and say that was an infield base hit. They're going to say that uh, he had no play on it, and that's probably an accurate statement. I think Johnson was going to beat it out. It was a bang-bang play. This inning continues. Aiden Dawes now coming up to the play. He's 0 for 2, and there's a strike called. Dawes has popped out, was hit by a pitch, and struck out looking in the sixth. Boy, the Mules would love to keep this inning going. If they're able to keep it going somehow, Dylan Hall awaiting on deck. Timeout is called here by Aiden Dawes. Home plate umpire grants it seven to six now to score. Just misses downstairs. One ball and one strike. Let's go, let's go. Pretty good game here in Poplar Bluff, seven to six. Ellington got two runs in the first, three in the fifth, and two in the sixth. Mules got three in the fifth and three in the sixth. Runner takes off, and he is safe at second base. A swing and a miss, though, by Aiden Dawes. And he is down to his last strike. So Johnson gets a stolen base. He is on second base now with two down in the inning. Mules here trying to hang on. Oh, the strike three, and the game will come to an end. Mules are going to come up short here in this one. Seven to six to score. It goes at two hours and 16 minutes, and the Mules are going to come away with the loss here, going to four and five on the season. Ellington will end up and get the win here in the bottom of the seventh inning. They are going to end up and take the win over the Mules at seven to six, your final score, two hours and 16 minutes. We'll have highlights and totals coming up. You're listening to Mules Baseball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.
we are back here as the Mules fall one run short here tonight, 7-6 to six over the Whippets out of Ellington. Ellington now goes to 5-6 and six on the season. Mules go to 4-5, and five, a really good game all the way around. Mules coming up just a little bit shy of the ball game here today. They got down by five runs in this one, but man, they made a surge in this game, and they would come all the way back and come away just one run short. As it ended up two hours and 16 minutes was the overall time on this ball game. The winning pitcher today was McCormick, and the losing pitcher in this game was David Durbin. So Durbin will get the loss here today as this game comes to an end. And we're going to be joined coming up by the head coach of the Mules, John David Patillo. Mules fall tonight by 7-6. to six. The final score tonight as Ellington will now improve to 5-6 and six, and the Mules drop to 4-5. and five. Joining us right now, the head coach of the Mules, John David Patillo. And coach, this game, once again, it came down to the wire. This time, the Mules could not get that extra umph to take the win in the bottom of the seventh. But, hey, your team never gave up yet again tonight. No, we didn't. Um... We just got to get out of uh, giving people runs early, and, and uh, you know we can't afford to do that. And those are those are the type of things that just are continuing to hurt us. Uh, but you know we're we're just going to keep battling. I mean that's all that's all we can do. I'm my frustrations. I have frustration with me because I'm trying to force things to happen and instead of allowing the kids to. Uh, you know, make plays, but, uh, you know, we're, we just today uh, didn't take advantage of, of things that we had. And then, you know, Ellington hit the ball and put it in play and did a nice job. And they've got some guys that can hit the baseball. Jake, uh, Jake Farmer was the guy you're referring to there, a three-run homer back in the fifth inning. Wound up being the biggest difference maker of the game, a three-run Jack made it 5 nothing. The Mules, though, they were able to uh, score three in the fifth, three in the sixth. And what about that play there by Noah Spain on second base to kind of make Ellington get that force out, allowing Greenwall to come in and score that sixth run in the bottom of the sixth. That was huge for you guys. That was, and it was a good base running play. Uh, and, you know, we've been – we look like a very immature team running the bases at times because, again, we are. We're young. But, uh, you know, Noah did a great job there and, and uh, allowed that run to come in and score. Absolutely. Here tonight – and I want to go back to David Durbin. I know he's going to pick up the loss here tonight. But what about him? I mean, he left because of a pitch count. But when he ended, he retired seven straight batters. Oh, by the way, has seven strikeouts here tonight as well. Yeah, um, David's very capable of, of being a good pitcher for us. And, uh, you know, and, and the, the purpose of the pitch count is we'll come back with him and, and he'll be throwing on Thursday at some point. And uh, so, you know, we're – uh, we've got guys that uh, can come in, throw strikes. The other guys came in for the most part and did a good job. Um, we gave up a few things, but um, uh, I thought David, all in all, after that first inning settled down and, and threw pretty good. Absolutely. You look at what we were able to accomplish here tonight. Going back to Saturday, Coach, seven errors tonight, one error. This team looked a lot different than they did on Saturday. Yeah. In a and, lot of key areas. Right. Um, and, and like I said, I, I know that, uh, you know, we're capable of being a really good defensive team. And, and at times uh, uh, we're showing that. And so, but it's, you know, it's early season high school baseball. And, you know, the, the thing that I just told our guys, the thing that disappoints me is we don't seem sometimes prepared. Not that we're not prepared, just stepping out, being ready to go right away. You know, first inning, get after it, and um, I don't know. It's just uh, something that's getting away from us a little bit. And so we've got to we've got to do a better job of make sure that our collective team is ready to play at all times. And and not that they're not ready, but uh, we don't have much much vocal guys. I mean, even our seniors, you know, uh, Kaysen. 
case and won't hardly speak to you and you know if you're standing there one-on-one -on -one with him but you know and he leads by example you just need some people to be more vocal and uh it needs to be our middle infielders and sometimes that's our freshmen and you know it's our young guys and so they're they're not overly vocal so we just got to be more prepared once we step on the field that we're ready to make plays the and um, and our pitchers have got to be ready to throw strikes right away. Two biggest knocks here of the game for the Mules coming from your underclassmen, a two RBI double by Marcus Tabanera back in the fifth. He is a freshman. He is playing some good innings for you. Mm -hmm. And then Noah Spain, this kid can do it defensively. It doesn't matter if he plays third base or shortstop. He can do it that way on defense. And then when you needed it the most in the sixth, a two out, two RBI double to give your team at least an opportunity to make that comeback in the seventh. And like you said a moment ago, Today's big knocks are by the underclassmen, and they are getting some really good innings for you so far this year. Yeah, they are. And and like I said, uh, um, we're growing and learning as we go. But uh, we definitely are getting some good play um, by the young guys. And uh, um, Dobbs didn't play as well. Dobbs has been playing lights out, and uh, he struggled today. But uh, uh, we got a chance to get Miles back there and – uh, we we move Miles from shortstop to kind of relieve him a little bit by, as at the catching position the last few innings, and I thought Miles came in and did a good job handling Casein, you know, while Casein was pitching. What so. I like about your infield, I mean, you can put Noah Spain on third base and you can take Miles Johnson, put him on short, and it works out both ways for you. Yeah, these guys, uh, there's they have a lot of talent and a lot of ability, and they understand the game. And like I said, their biggest issue with me is just them being more vocal to each other and to, to their other guys. And sometimes that's hard to do when you're the young guy, but uh, they have to when they're playing those key positions. So now we're going to take this loss here tonight, and I want to tell you you're going to have two or three days off to kind of get ready, but you don't. In 24 hours, you go up against Sykeston on the road in Sykeston, SEMO Conference matchup. So what will you guys do between now and then tomorrow afternoon to get ready psychologically for that big SEMO Conference matchup coming up tomorrow? Well, we just we talk about the things that uh, you know we didn't like today and clean them up and just go be prepared to play. Um, that's all. That's all you can do. We don't have time to go practice and and uh, you know take a lot of time between games. You just got to be prepared to play. Build on the things that you're doing right and hopefully uh, make the things that uh, aren't going so well. You know we can make them a lot better. So. So tomorrow afternoon, you guys will leave Bluff around 2 o'clock, I would assume. Yep. And do we know yet who's going to be on the bump tomorrow, or is it going to be a tomorrow time decision? Probably be Bratcher to start, yes. All right, so, Coach, good luck to you coming up tomorrow. Safe trip to Sykeston. We'll see you there for our live interview coming up at around 410 tomorrow, my friend. All right, thanks. All right, we're back in 30 seconds to wrap it up. You're listening to Mules Baseball on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mule. Radio Network. So the Mules here tonight fall a little bit short. 7-6 to six was the final score tonight. Poplar Bluff now goes to 4-5 and five on the season. And Ellington, once again, they go to 5-6. and six. Let's go ahead now and get our totals in for you real quick. Durbin picks up the loss here today. He went three innings, giving up one hit, two runs. Both of them were earned. He walked one, struck out seven. Season good came in. He went two and two 
two-third innings, giving up nine hits, five runs. All five were earned. He walked three, struck out two. King went one and one-third inning, giving up no hits, no runs, no errors. He walked one, struck out two on the other side. McCormick, he picked up the win. Five innings, five hits, three runs, no earned runs. Walked two batters, struck out five. And the save is Morey. He went two innings, five hits, three runs, all three earned. He walked none and struck out two. Offensively for Popper Bluff here tonight. Spain and Tabanera each picking up a double here this afternoon. Also hit by pitches were Dylan Hall, Kaysen King, and Aiden Dawes. Stolen bases, Noah Spain had two, Johnson had two, and the Mules had one air in the ball game. And that would have been a throwing air on David Durbin. And that is it. As far as hit goes, Hall had a hit. Greenwall had two hits. King had a hit. Spain had two hits. A big double with two RBIs. Also an RBI by season good on a ground ball which would end the inning. That's when Noah Spain was able to uh, do his uh, move between second and third base and let the run come in and score. Tabanera had a hit with two RBIs. And then Johnson with two big hits here today as well. Mules picking up ten hits on six runs and one air. Ellington had seven runs on ten hits. Ellington two runs in the first. They had three in the fifth and two in the sixth. Mules had three in the fifth and three in the sixth and could not get any closer as the Mules coming up a little bit short tonight. They fall 7-2-6. So tomorrow the Mules are back at it again tomorrow afternoon beginning at 4.30 against Sykeston. That means our pregame is going to begin coming up at around 4.10 and our first pitch will be live in Sykeston beginning at 4.30. And remember tomorrow's game is going to be only on the radio as we'll have no power out there in Sykeston. Therefore, our ball game will only be on the radio starting off at around 410 as we'll be live in Sykeston. Let's thank our sponsors one more time here tonight and then we will say so long from Popper Bluff. Our sponsors, they include First Midwest Bank, also being brought to you by Kevin's Auto Repair, PB Realty, Legacy Farm and Land Specialist, Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, also being brought to you by Russian Towing First Choice Insurance, PB, or I should say Popper Bluff Regional Medical Center, Patriot Auto Glass, Christian Automotive and Tire, Eye Care Specialist, also Larry Hillis Dodge, Briggs and Stratton, the Scott Law Group LLC, and Taco John's. For Tim Hicks, I'm Frankie Castile. The Mules tonight fall 7-6 to six and now go to 4-5 and five on the season. You've been listening live to Mules Baseball and watching it live as well. This is the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.